a successful family, and and uh, my subtitle is the man, the man. And uh, I think I told you last week that ladies, you 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 know you can't be spectators because I have something here for you. I'm gonna have something here for you all the time. Now we're gonna you know we we're doing the man first, and because we're gonna hurry and get him out the way. Cause we're going <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it's probably gonna take about two months to get through the ladies. You guys are so, so, amen. No, I don't know. It may, not, it may take that while. But, um, but, but I want you to listen, and because I think I told you before, um, for the ladies, you, you're going to understand, you know, why your man is, is, why he goes through what he goes through, why he's uptight sometimes, and, and why he struggles with issues, and that you're like, what, what the problem? What's the problem? Well, you're going to find out what the problem is. Um, you know, and, and for, you, for you ladies that's looking for a guy, you'll know what to look for and you'll know what to avoid. Yeah, you, you really need to know that. You'll know what to avoid. For the guys, is you have a me some measuring devices. And like, oh, wow, okay, that's what I need to do. And of all you married people that got a husband, you're going to you're gonna learn how to pray. Cause you you got him. You can't you can't you you, you got the right one, baby. On huh? Yeah. You you got him. You 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 made your choice. That's what it is. And so you know and, uh, that's just the way it go. But um, it's, it's um, I want to share some stuff, and I think I think it's, it's going to be good. Now Luke chapter six verse forty six. This serves as our foundation, and I'm going to keep reading this because this was one of the scriptures that that just brought so much peace to me, and because I'm a, I'm a results guy. I don't just read. I, I study for results. But this is one of the scriptures years ago that set me free and, and I hadn't got bound up again. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me, hears my sayings, or hears the word, and does them, I'll show you to whom he's like. Well, show me, Jesus. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock, laid the foundation on the rock, laid the foundation on the rock. And when the floods arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house. That's a hurricane. And it could not shake it. Why? For it was founded on a rock. But he who heard and did nothing with what he heard, it's like a man to build his house on the earth and when the foundation, without a foundation, and against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So this tells me that the difference between being unshakable and collapsing is the foundation that I build on. And that foundation is based on me. Both people built the house, but one decided to take the shortcut. And one decided to say, no, no, I'm going to build this thing on a foundation. Now, this is really powerful, and I love it because this lets me know that no matter what comes at me, no matter what hits me, no matter what uh, I have to deal with, if I build my life, my marriage, my family, my, my everything on the word, I don't care how it hits, when it hits, whether it hits, well, well, it's going to hit. It doesn't matter because if I'm on the rock, if my foundation is solid, I'm going to come out all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, there are things in our life we don't sign up for. There are things that we don't see coming. There are things that I, I was saying this morning that there are things that I know I said maybe 10 years ago, I'll never have to deal with that. You ever said that? You better watch yourself. Because, see, all of us sitting here like, I never end up my wildest psychedelic dream thought I would ever have to deal with some of the stuff I'm dealing with. On, There's some stuff that comes out of left field, center field, midfield, and over the fence. There's some stuff we like, oh, that'll never happen in my family. <laughs> and, and see, we don't know. And Jesus told him. He told us. It's coming. It's not like, well, I'm going to pray hard and I'm going to make sure you do all of that. It's still coming. And we don't know how it's coming. We don't know if it's going to come down L Street 
We don't know if it's going to land in a helicopter. We don't know if it's going to come while I'm sleeping or while I'm on vacation. I don't know. Storms are indiscriminate and they don't care. They don't care if you're sleeping. They'll get on you and choke you right while you're having your best sleep. Storms of life. Storms of life. Don't ever say, don't ever say, ah, oh, that ain't going to ever happen. Don't say that. But, but my point is, I can, if I'm building on the right, this is what set me free. It's, it's, if I hear this word and do this word, it doesn't matter what comes. And then I always, I always pair this with the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, where, where God said, he is faithful not to allow me to be tempted above what I'm able. Yeah. See, that means that he has already surveyed your life. And he knows what you can handle. And so if you're in something, he said, well, I'm going to go ahead and let this come on in and deal with you because you can handle it. If you couldn't handle it, he wouldn't let you even be involved in it. So you got to understand that whatever you're dealing with right now, God said, oh, you can handle it. It's not a problem. You got this. God is faithful. But see, somewhere you built some stuff on the word and God said, no, you can handle that. But you got to handle it. So if I build my family on the word, God, it doesn't matter. I don't care if, it, if it's that crazy, crazy donor who got the crazy donor that, that put the sperm and made me have a baby, his crazy self, or if it's the crazy mom-in-law, if it's the crazy in-law, the outlaw, if it's the crazy, I don't care what it, whatever comes, if I build on the word, my family going to be all right. Now, I love you. I love you, and, and, and I hope your family's all right, but if you ain't on the word, I, I can't help you. So don't, don't get jealous at me now. Don't get jealous because we're walking in this thing. Are you building on the foundation? That's my question right now. What foundation are you on? What foundation is your family on? Well, you know, my grandmama, you know, she said that if I just keep this rabbit foot, I'll be all right. You better get that word. You better get that word. Well, you know, if I keep put, kicking the ham, cooking the ham in this same pot, we're going to be all right. No, you better get that word. Throw that pot away, get you a better pot. I'm just trying to make a point that you, you and I, we got to examine our foundation. We got to examine our foundation. It's coming. It's going to come against your marriage. See, and married folk, your marriage may be divine. I mean divine. It's going to come against your kids. The devil, he loved to use the kids to try to get you to lose your mind. He loved to do that. He loved doing that. He loved bringing up stuff, you, you know, you, stuff you did way back before you got saved. And you just cruise it. It's all good. This is the day. And then, and then here comes something that they pulled up 10 years ago. Like, oh, wow. Well, yeah, I did, but golly. Especially with this internet thing now. They find everything about you. i like, oh, Lord, please don't let them find. Please. i like, Lord, please don't let them report that. That time I was in New Orleans. Please. 19, 1980. I was like, Lord, please, I, I, I ain't been back down there. I ain't, been, I ain't going back. I ain't going back. Uh, you dead driver's license, I go down there. Okay. No, you know, you think about stuff like that, but you know, you're like, you're God, okay, you got me, right? Okay, so, so this is our foundation scripture, by the way. So um, I want you to go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 19 now. I, sh I hope I didn't spend too much time on that. You got the gist, the gist. Okay, while you've turned, I'm going to talk. Um, we said a family is, um, we believe that's God intended for a family to be a nurturing community of people in intimate relationships. And we said there's at least six things that should occur um, or, or be perpetuated in the family setting. These six things, and, and these six things all through this series we're going to be hitting them and, and pulling them out. You're going to see some of this. Uh, but in the family, see, what I should get in my family is protection. I should get direction. I should get instruction. I should get support. I should be fulfilled, get fulfillment. And there should be times of celebration. If nobody else celebrates me, my family will celebrate me. If nobody else supports me, my family got my back. Yeah, if nobody else wants to talk to me and show me how, my family will show me. And they'll tell me the naked truth. They'll tell me, the, boy, you tripping. You just tripping. 
won't they? And they, they, they ain't got a lick of sense, but they can tell you, you tripping. All right. Now, so, and we said this, we said that, as a, now this is our third time, so I'm reviewing quick. We said that as a child of God, I must have the word of God as my standard, because now I'm building my life on it. I have to have a standard that I build my life on. Not the world standard, on God's standard. And we said that if, uh, if I'm a child of God, I need to make the adjustment so that I can build on the word. Now today, we're going to begin to get into the meat of the series, exploring the, the different roles, responsibilities, and purposes that God has. God is a very purposeful God. And so we want to start today, and we're going to start with the male. Because, um, well, I'm going to show you why in a minute. Now, I want you to read this. Um, hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 19. You there? Okay, look at verse 21. It said, many plans are in the man, excuse me, in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purposes that will stand. Yes. It's the Lord's purpose will stand. Where are the plans? Man's mind. Where's the purpose? The Lord. With the Lord. Now, I wanted to read that because, and I'm going to slow down now, because what we have to understand is God has purpose for everything. And the, the creation of the male, God had a whole lot of thing in mind for him, even the, the way we're, we're physically constructed. There's purpose for that. So I want to take you now, because uh, what, what's happened, confusion has happened, is people have taken uh, roles. My role as a man is this. This is my role. Well, roles don't come from God. They come from culture. They come from tradition. They come from Hollywood. <laughs> You know, um, uh, you know, Rose, I was one of the examples I always use when I talk about this is there was a time when 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 men, men just went to work, women stayed home and they cook. When, right. All women, you cook, you just have a meal for me when I get home. You know, that that's the role. How many of y'all know that's gone? Because some of these women can't cook a lick. <laughs> and ain't trying to cook a lick either. <laughs> Brother, you better go get you a microwave. Well. Well, that used to be that used to be the thing. Uh, that was and that was a role. And we also said, okay, well, you you I'll go to work, you cook, and th you know we thought that was a role. And I never, you know, I mean, I, my mom, I learned how to cook. I know how to cook, iron, everything. So I used to have to hem my pants, man. Yeah, I had to hem my own pants. And uh, so, yeah. So anyway, so but God not into roles. God into purpose. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about because. See, you know, you've heard this before that it's, you, we're born males, but we have to become a man. You have to become a man. It's not automatic. I didn't become a man until I was like 38. 38? Well, what was your between 18 and 37? A boy. Don't look at me like that. Some of y'all still boys. <laughs> Because Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 11, he said, he said, when, when I was a child, I thought of a child, I figured a child, but when I became, became, I wasn't born a man when I became, I didn't become a man when I was 21, I became a man. When, when, Paul, he said, how'd you know, Paul? He said, when I put away childish things, I, I thought of becoming a man. And so some guys haven't put away childish things. I don't want to talk. You did that. I ain't saying nothing to you this week. Pump your own gas. That's childish. That's childish. That's a childish thing. You leave the, you leave the toilet seat up on purpose. That's childish. That's childish. So Paul said, when I, when I put away the child thing, I, I graduated to manship. Okay, now turn with me, please, manship. Go to Genesis chapter 2. I want to look at these now. I'm going to look at a couple of scriptures. Now, I do want to caution you that, um, um, you know, I'm preaching ideal. None of us are here yet. But we should be on the way. I remember I struggled with this. I struggled with this thing. I mean, you know, I, I spent hours and hours hours. I never forget this first seminar I went to. 
See, see, most of us have never even been intentionally taught on how to be a man or what a real man is. And we just kind of try to make it work and try to, try to do what we've done, what we've seen other people do. And God has specific, specific instructions. So I want to talk about that because, you know, some of you, some of you you're going to see some of your, your boys and some of the stuff I've talked about. You're going to understand some of them. Some of them, you're going to see why some of them are just angry right now. There's some men just angry. I, don't want, I hate you. you I, all of that. And, and the girls, too. I, I'm mad. Why? Why? See, how many of y'all heard of juvenile delinquency? See, there cannot be juvenile delinquents until there's been first adult delinquency. They come here, they don't come here like that. Yeah, there's adult delinquency before there's juvenile delinquency. And, and it's not, it's, it, well, it's somebody's fault. I don't want to put it on anybody in here because some of us just didn't know. And some of us are doing things now, and we, we, we think it's cute, and we don't know. We, we, killing, we, we killing these young folks inside. Right. We're killing our wives. Let me preach. Okay. All right. Um, Genesis chapter 2, right? Okay. Now, um, we're going to start. We're going to go into the road. We're going to cover two things today, and... Uh, and then we'll pick it up because that's, that's, all, that's, all that's all we can handle. We gotta, I got to kind of spoon feed us on this stuff here. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we want to look at Adam because Adam, God gave Adam um, some, 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 some things that holds true even today. Now, man, we have to think in terms of purpose. Say purpose. purpose. Okay, purpose is the intent of something. Now, Galatians chapter 2, uh, Genesis chapter 2. Verse 7, and the Lord formed man in the dust of the ground, from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Man became a living being. Where did man come from? Okay, now, you know, one of the fallacies that people make or say, and, you know, they, I guess, you know, splitting hair, call it what you want. They say, well, the human race, the human family started uh, from, from Adam and Eve. It did not. The human, the human family, the human race did not start from a couple. Come on. It started from a male. Yeah. It started from a male. There was only one person that God came, brought him up out of the dust and created. Everybody else came out of him. That's why he was obligated to take care of her because she came out of him. That's why he was obligated. I'm going to show you some more stuff in a minute. But... See, see, why, 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 so why are we going to talk about the male first? Why the emphasis on the male? Because the male, see, you got to get, God is so perfect. The male is the foundation of the human, human family. He's the foundation of our families. The male is the foundation. Why? See, what do you do on the foundation? You build upon it. The foundation holds the weight of responsibility. I said the foundation holds the weight of responsibility. Everything may not be my fault, but I'm responsible. See, see, God put that on me. Ladies, this is why, that's just why, man, see, don't be so hard on your man because there's a weight on him that you don't know about. Yeah. There's a, there's a pressure on him that you don't know about. And, and that's why we got, that's what I'm saying. You're going to learn how to pray for him and understand him. But he's responsible to carry this thing. So Adam, that's why God dealt with Adam like he did. Because Adam was responsible. Well, me, being a male, I'm responsible. Brothers, see, I'm so glad I see all these men in the house today. This is so awesome. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. But see, I got to talk to you, though, because I love you. I don't know if I'm going to see you again. But see, we, we, we have a, a, the onus is on us to, to make stuff right, to do stuff right. Because if, we, if the foundation is, is wobbly, in fact, Psalm 11, 3 says, if the foundation is destroyed, the righteous can't even fix it. That's why Satan comes after the man. Two million people in prison, only 100,000 women, the rest of them men. Why? Satan's after the seed, the man. Most drunks you see on the road, on, on the street, men. Most, men. most people blowing their brains out, men. There's an attack on the seed. And I think, I personally believe there's a male 
crisis. I know. I don't believe. I know there's a male crisis. All these kids, but no daddies in the house. Come on. Come on. And I'm not. I'm not mad at anybody. But yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm mad. But that's why. That's why a lot of those attacks occur. Because he understands. See, Satan. Satan. See, he don't mind us going to church. Why do you think typically most churches, just about 99.9% .9 of churches, 99.99% .99 of churches got more women than men? See, he doesn't mind y'all coming to church and all that, and, and don't get me wrong, y'all, y'all, thank God y'all come, because y'all want y'all be y'all gonna keep these things going. <laughs> y'all, I pray God, I love women. I got something to say about that that, that a lot of folks ain't. A lot of preachers don't have a revelation about it yet, but um, my point is, he's frightened when you can get some men to come in for more than just looking for some tail in church. <laughs> when you get some men to say, I want this word, I want to learn, I'm going to learn how to learn how to be a man. That's what frightens him. That frightens him. Because he understands that foundation, man, they patching up them cracks. I can't get in there no more. He don't mind a guy coming to church playing games. All right. Okay, now let me, let me, let me, let me get going. Oof. Okay, so when God made male, he wasn't saying that, that man was more important than, than women. He just said that he's the foundation. So I'm no better and I want to bring this point out. See, my, I have to refer to her. See, I'm no better than her. Now, I want to deal with a, a major dysfunction early right now that men have so we can get free and so we can move on, okay? All right. So I want you to hold your spot there and go to, uh, oh, go, to uh, go back to Genesis 1. Can y'all put on the screen Ephesians 5, 20 and 21, please? One of the greatest dysfunctions in the minds of men is this one right here. This headship and submissive thing. Mm-hmm. No, I want, I want, we'll be free. We're going to be free in just a minute. All right. Look at uh, Ephesians, look at the screen if you, if you dare. <laughs> Give me thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 21, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Verse 22, that's the one, yeah, yeah. Wives, wives, submit to your own husbands <laughs> as to the Lord. Now, I read it like that to get your attention because that's the one most of us know. But you can't read 22 without reading 21. So back it up. There you go. Oh, you own it, girl. Uh, I hope you're a girl. Okay. Uh, submitting what? In the fear of God. So this lets me know something. There's a mutual submitting. There's a mutual submission. Me to her, her to me. Me to her. Her to me. Me to her. Her to me. There's a, it's not, because see, I would talk, don't you ever let a woman, man, don't you ever let a woman do that to you? You tell her how high to jump, when to jump, how high to jump. See, some of y'all women look at me like, oh, Lord, no, no. <laughs> no. Well, I don't understand that. That's the way I used to be. But now, and see, here's, here's what happened. In First Peter, it says that we're heirs together. Get this. We're heirs together of the grace of life. And so he said, if you don't have, he said, dwell with them according to knowledge, right? According to knowledge. Well, some of the knowledge is this right here. See, see, my understanding of my partnership with her. See, if I don't have an understanding of it that I'm heirs together, then, then God said, don't even talk to me. In other words, he said, don't even pray because your prayers are jacked up if you don't honor her and submit mutually to her. He said, don't even pray. Don't even talk to me. I don't want to talk to you. 
You can't, you can't honor her, respect her, and, and treat her as equal. Don't even talk to me. That's in the Bible. <laughs> it is. See, the way I treat her determines how God deals with me. Now, let me show you why. Go to Genesis 1. We have time, don't we? Okay, yeah. See, this is important. This, like see, some of this stuff can start working before you get to the car. I'm serious. Just an attitude adjustment. And this is a big one. This is why I wanted to bring I didn't, I'm going to bring it out now. Genesis 127 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created who? Them. Who? Them. And then God blessed who? Them. Who? Them. And God said to who? Them. Who? Them. Oh, y'all good. I like that. Y'all got, got some rhythm. <laughs> and he said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that moves on the earth. Who do you say that to? Yeah. Who? Yeah. He didn't just say it to him? Yeah. He said it to who? Yeah. All right, listen. So this woman has a dominion mandate just like me. For me to try to put her in a corner, sit over there and be quiet. The devil is a liar. Because now he's cutting off my dominion partner. See, see, there's a dominion desire in her. In every... <laughs> that got to be Karen. That got to be Karen. Where you at, girl? I say, okay, I hear you. I can't see you, but I hear you. I, they say, Stay with me, baby. I'm going to need you probably in about 10 more minutes. <laughs> Stay with me. But see, there's a dominion mandate in every woman. That's why, that's why, that's why when a woman see a man not handling his business, they like, get out the way, I got this. <laughs> no, and then we want to say, oh, you need to settle down. You need to, you need to find your place. No, this is my place. <laughs> see, she got dominion bulging out of her, moving in her. Like, listen, baby, you, listen, you going to do it or what? What you going to do? And, and she got something to say when she sees something going on. That's why you're like, why you just talk too much? No, that's dominion talking. Come on, let's handle this. Why are we putting up with this? How long are we going to be dealing with this? You said we're going to be out of here by next year. See, that's that dominion. And brother, we got to understand. We got to understand. She's not just rising up. That's dominion. And see, if you just link with it, and you just, you just hook with it. Because see, every day, you ain't always hitting it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I, you know what I mean. You, yeah. So, 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 so let her, because let her, she might be fresh. And so you take her dominion. She take your dominion. Y'all put your dominion. See, we're partners. He gave it to who? So that's why, let me say, I'm going to say this, I'm going to just say it, I'm going to just say it and move on. That's why, at least in my experience, I did a little survey one time. That's why a lot of women, after do dude get crazy and like leave, a lot of them do a whole lot better after he gone. They're like gone. Go ahead. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> I got this. No, really. And see, and, and you ladies, once you understand this, see, don't you ever let some man, don't you ever let some uneducated, ignorant, <laughs> on crap man tell you who you are. And see, now here's what a lot of preachers don't know. You know, a lot of times, a lot of preachers have issues with women being in leadership, women being pastors. See, domestically, say domestically. domestically. The man is the head. But in the kingdom of God, according to Galatians, he said, he said, in Christ, there's neither Jew, Greek, male, female. We're all one in Christ. That's why a woman can be in leadership leading a whole bunch of men. Yeah. Now in the house, domestically, 
But even that, because some people are like, well, I'm her spiritual head. No, you're not. You, you're her natural head. You ain't died for nobody. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we got to get the term straight. You're not, you're not my spiritual head. Jesus is my... Listen, we got the same head, player. We got the same head. We got the same head. That's why you can't be throwing down on me. We got the same head. And if you want your prayers answered, you better treat me right. <laughs> this is why we got to dwell with them according to this knowledge. So, brother, we got we see part of purpose is knowing, you know, see, why you why you get married? <laughs> go back to Genesis 2. I don't want to go there yet. I don't want to go there today. I don't want to go there today. So she got dominion. Single sisters, you got just as much dominion. That's why you that's why you don't take a back seat to well, they married so they can get ahead. No, okay, no, they can't. In fact, you can go fast and you ain't gotta drag nobody along. <laughs> You ain't got nobody hindering you. Now, don't get no ideas. Yeah, Pastor, see, that's what I'm talking about. Pastor said, oh, Pastor said. Okay. Now, let's go. Let's go. Oh, let's go. Come on. Genesis chapter 2. You there? Yes, sir. All right. Because we're going we're gonna to hit two, two roles, two purposes today. Verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep it. Now, that's not a role, that's a purpose. And tend means to cultivate it. Okay. Here's what that means. <laughs> cultivate means to make something better than when you first received it. Yeah. So God put in man the quality to be a developer. the garden. Everything in that garden see for a man whenever the man gets done with it it should be better than it was before he got it. He's a cultivator. He said, he said tend to the cultivator. See we're supposed to be making something grow. Whenever I hear a man complain about his woman I look at him because I can't look at nobody because they'd be like he think I'm talking about him. <laughs> See, if you've been with a woman at least five or ten years and she's still the same, you ain't handling your business. I don't know that's why I close my eyes. Eh? <laughs> See, see, we like to blame. When? Why you still got issues with this? Why you still got issues with this? You can say. Cause you ain't, cause you ain't made me better. Right. <laughs> it's my job to make her better. Yeah. That's a reflection of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm supposed to be nurturing her. I'm supposed to be doing everything, creating an environment for she, to, for her to be the best she could be. To nurture her, give, to encourage her, to to build her up, to support her, and to take pressure off of her. Yeah. That's my job. Yeah. That's what a cultivator does. If I see something sneaking in the house, I go get my ball, my Holy Ghost, uh, uh, what's that stuff called? They kill weeds. Roundup. I get my Holy Ghost bottle of Roundup. I see some, I see some stress trying to grow. <laughs> Cultivate. I feed her uniquely. That's my job. Everything that comes in my garden. I'm supposed to make it better. And, and, and if she's not growing and getting better, it's on me. If she's looking, if she's still toe down after, after five years, you ought to say, Pastor, you need, Pastor, you need, you need some help. You don't go to her, you tell me, Pastor, you need some help. Cultivator. Everything in that garden was here. He said, everything hit ten. The bugs, shine their coats. You got flowers, you got this woman in here, cultivate. Now that, 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 can I flip something? Because see women, especially you're single ones and, and you, you dating somebody, you know, after he put his best rap on you, 
you need to come back with. Can you make me better? Can you nourish me? Can you make me grow? Can you make me excel? Can you help me? Can you help me flow in what I've been created, my creative purposes, my gifts and talents? Can you cause me to fly? Now, if you can't do that, we don't need to talk. Because I ain't even trying to date nobody. Because see, see, the wrong person, the male that don't know this, he will pull you down. He will destroy your dream. He will destroy what your parent put in you. He will destroy what the Holy Ghost put in you. He will kill. He will stymie your vision and your energy. So I told you I had something for everybody. Yeah, can you, can you, I got to kill over here. Yeah, can you, can you, can you make me better? Can you take me up? That's my job. That's my job. And then I go to my kids. I'm supposed to help them develop. Know how to make decisions. I teach them how to do that. We role play. This is how you handle pressure moments. This is how you do this. Now, come on, try. Go ahead. I remember the first time, I remember first, I think he was like five or six. I said, okay, order from the menu. No, don't order like that. Sit up straight and talk clearly loud. And tell them. Tell them what you are. They're working for you. I tell them that all the time. I say, these folks working for you. Well, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want them to have to go back. They're working for you. Tell them to go back. You want some more water. I want some more water. You cultivate them. You cultivate it. You get all that fear out of them. All that intimidation out of them. Because, see, once they leave you somebody, somebody going to going feed on that and use them and abuse them. And that's what I was talking about the other day. That's where they find their acceptance in, in, in this framework. You accept it here. Man, you're special here. There's none like you in all the earth. You're good. Well, what if he messed up? Well, we beat him down. It's all right. He's, beat him down. He, he gets a beat down and then we resurrect him. Okay, I got I to give you a beat down, but you know I love you. You, 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 got, you have to administer some stuff. Okay, I, I'm, I'm way off, y'all. So, so, <laughs> so, what am, where am I at? Did I move? Yeah. So, so, no matter what condition, something comes into my garden. When I'm done with it, it's going to be at a higher level. Think about that. So, there's a concentration on my mind. How can I make her better? How can I make my, my youngest better? There's a concentration. I'm not just trying to get my accomplishment. I'm not just trying to, to get my thing going. I'm not just trying to, to get my, build my resume. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. But selfishness says it's all about me. Purpose says, see, see God, God doesn't read our resumes. Y'all know that, right? See, what God determines success and what we determine success is totally different thing. One of the things God says, especially with a man, is my domestic resume. What are you doing behind these doors? I know all the folks out here like you and they think you're all wonderful and all that. And you're all right. But see, what you doing behind here? Yeah. Cultivate. Everybody say cultivate. cultivate. All right. <clears throat> so. So, you, so, you, so, so later, you need to decide, okay, what, what's this male in your life, your most significant other? And I'm, I'm, not t I'm not telling you to get mad at your husband or nothing, because if your husband here, listen, he understands. Okay, wow, well, okay. I, they never told me that. And then who you with? There's a lot of frustrated women because they're with somebody that don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They use me. Listen, don't even call you no more. They got the victory, you, 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 you on the wall. Is that too plain? Oh. Yeah. They don't know what they do. They don't know what they're doing. Don't give them the time of day. You ain't no experiment. You ain't no experiment. You, you, girl, you, you got dominion. You let it know, I will cut your water off, player. You, you don't. I am not to be played with, okay? <laughs> you had to tell him that in a nice way. Yeah. 
Yeah, they don't, some of them don't know what they're doing. Some of y'all need to quit. Oh, Jesus. Some of y'all need to, need to when y'all get out, get out of here, you text them, say, I'm, I quit you. I just quit you. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I just quit you. I just quit you because you don't know what to do with me. Man, you, you slowing up my progress. I just found out I got dominion. Hey, I got some, I got some dominion, okay? I don't need you. I don't need you. I don't need, I don't need you to take me to lunch. I do my own lunch. I don't know where all this coming from, y'all. I told that first group to pull. I think they were sleeping. Y'all, y'all, y'all pulling. Every child is born into this world with an innate longing for love. So I need to create an environment at the cultivator for them to grow personally, to grow spiritually, to minimize the disappointment and discouragement. See. One of the worst things that can happen is for the one who, who built God made me to encourage, to cultivate, and help folk grow. One of the worst things that can happen for me to be the source of frustration and disappointment, to be the source of, of, of stunting their growth and development. The daddy. That's a, there's going to be a special section in hell. Okay, I'm getting, uh, am I going over the edge? For deadbeat daddies. If they don't get saved. We want them to get saved though, don't we? Okay. But I need to create an environment for my, my child. Where they can grow. Where they don't have to suck up to anybody just to feel like they're important. Cultivate. Say cultivate again. All right. Oh, Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> so. <laughs> Cultivate. Can I talk to the unmarried young men? All y'all unmarried young men, single guys, can I, can, I, can I holler at you for a minute? They ain't like, they, they just... <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna say? <laughs> okay, I'll I skip over it. See, that's all the women talking. Huh? Alright. Okay. Here we go. When a young lady comes into your presence, she ought to leave better. When she comes into your presence, strong, too strong, vulgar, looking like a hoe. When she comes into your presence, talking all like that, acting like that. See, I, I asked y'all, y'all said yeah. <laughs> she ought to leave your presence with dignity. She ought to leave your presence with some respect. She ought to leave your present not wondering if she's pregnant. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I thought I thought I used. She ought to walk away like a lady. Because, see, you, you, you ought not walk away from me. You ought to walk away and somebody say, uh, girl, what happened to you? I was just with, I, I just got with this man and, and, you know, I was trying to go on and, you know, I was trying to work him and he worked me. <laughs> and I feel, you know, I hadn't felt like this. I, hadn't, I think he likes me. <laughs> he ain't, he wasn't even trying to, you know, I don't know what y'all say. He wasn't trying to, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what y'all say, but. <laughs> But I was trying to, I was trying to, you know, I was trying to, I don't know what y'all say. But anyway, but, but, you know, I feel, you know what, I think, I think, you know, I think I need to, I think I need to start thinking differently. Because this man gave me some respect, I ain't used to this. I was going to work him like a part-time job, you know, and get, so I can get over here. And he showed me some respect. I don't need to do that. He, 
he kind of made me feel special. Where that man? Where that man at? Where that, where that man go to church at? He might go to that lighthouse. <laughs> but young men, unmarried guys, see, see, you gotta, you gotta respect. See, you, you, you cultivate. Whether, you don't wait till you get married. You got a niece, cultivate her. She may not have a dad. Cultivate, make that girl feel him. Cultivate her, baby. You good. Cultivate her. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm so conscious of that. And, and you know, God, God, well, I don't even want to tell you because it's something I do all the time, but I don't want to, oh, that's what he's doing. All right. So, so when we function according to purpose, we become developers. When we don't, function according to purpose, we become destroyers. We become destroyers and part of purpose as a man, you know, whether you're married or not, this is part of purpose. It's in us to cultivate. That's why we find so much uh, satisfaction and fulfillment in, in what we do. You know, instead of asking folks what they name it, we say, what you do? Man. We, we, we like to talk about our accomplishments. Because, because we're called, we like, we like any product, we like results, we like, oh wow, look what I did. Amen. Okay. They good? Yes. Now, I said, I said, okay, let me flip that. Uh, young lady, if a, if a young man comes into your presence, all vulgar, Calling you names that you know your mama didn't name you. <laughs> First of all, you don't answer. But then you demand respect. You you require it. Put his hand on you on your knee, talking about, oh man, I'm sorry, I, I was reaching for the water bottle. No, you wouldn't. Take me home. Take me, take me back to my house. You go back to your apartment. Take me home. I don't play that. You don't talk to me that way. You don't, you don't, you don't know. You don't talk to me that way. You need to, you need to learn how to, you need to go down to, to the lighthouse and get, and get, get that tape my pastor did and, and learn how to cultivate. If you want the blessing of God on you, you got to flow in purpose. Cultivate. Like I said a minute ago, so many women are frustrated because they were guys that don't know what they're doing. And I ain't talking about sex, and I'm just talking about just, see, listen. Good sex start up here. We're going to talk about that. Not today. We'll give you a fair warning, so, you know, if you don't want your minors, minors to hear about that, then they probably know more about it than you do, but... <laughs> You got to talk about it. Yeah. Y'all don't de If y'all know what we have to deal with all the time, I mean all the time, a lot. You say, oh, I see why pastor talking about that. Okay, let me give you this last one so y'all can go. <laughs> I think we can only handle one more. Um, Genesis, we, we're, we're still in verse 15. Let's read it again because the other purpose is about to come forth. Then the Lord took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to what? Keep it. <laughs> um, one of our purposes is to protect. Every woman ought to feel safe around me. Yeah. They shouldn't have to have somebody, you know, have their button on speed dial just in case I, I start looking cross-eyed at them. So he was supposed to cultivate and he was supposed to protect. See, not only was he supposed to protect the garden from intruders, but you know what else was in that garden? The presence of God. And God said, don't you let anything disturb my presence in here. We fellowship. Glory to God. 
And he said, anything that is not my plan, that's not my will, I need you to eradicate it and to knock it out. If you're married, when your wife has some emotion, when she's having emotional moments, when frustration of maybe things that are going on in the house, your job is to protect her from that. <laughs> okay, just keep looking straight ahead. We only got eight more minutes. See, my job is to protect. I, I, don't, I don't care where the source of frustration came from. My job is to get it off of her. Protect her from that. Protect my kids. Like I said, you know, I told in, in the first, first lesson, I talked about, see, I don't care how wrong they are. They got to know I got their back. I'm not condoning or supporting uh, uh, what they do, but after all the dust is clear, I got your back. Yeah. And my job is to protect my house. I don't let aliens come into my house. I don't let the Grim Reaper just come into my house. When I sense something wrong, uh-uh, no, no, no. We go on a search and destroy mission. What is that? And so I got to stay close enough to God to understand, so, okay, okay, this is attack on the house. This is an attack. When I see her frustrated, see him frustrated, and see my fish frustrated, okay, it's an attack on the house. And, and I got to protect my house. I don't, I, no, I got to protect my, you listening to me? I got to protect my, I got to protect my child. I got to protect the folks in me. even with this church you know this is the form I'm for I'm a form of a father not like, like father like father Catholic but but like a father and so that's certain thing I do of course I can't even tell you about them all and some of them and some certain people I put I put restraining orders on I thought don't you bring your here no more why to protect and so my house I got to, you know, my family, the, the people, see, even people that, that when, see, uh, come on. You know, I, if I ever disrespect you, woman, come at you the wrong way, you slap the mess out of me. Just slap, right here, just slap all the black off this side, right here, pow, just slap it. No, you have a right to do that. And watch this, and anybody else in here that comes at you like that. Yeah, just slap the black or the white or the yellow or whatever they is. Just slap it off of them, the right side. Slap off the right side. The pastor told me to do that. You're on your own, though, but go ahead and do it. I can see Anchor Daily News. Pastor Friendly got in a fight with the parishioners. I knew something was up with him. <laughs> So, 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 uh, yeah, protect them. Got to protect them. Sometimes you just call them. Sometimes see, it ought to get to the point where they just, when they just hear your voice, they're like, oh, you may be down in Georgia, but you just, hey, baby, I was just thinking about you. Huh? Yeah, I was thinking about you, girl, sure. Uh huh? Yeah. You okay? How was your day? That's the way women do it. That's the way women do it. Well, let's see, at 8.15, I was, um, <laughs> I was at the stoplight of Arctic and, and New Hampshire, and then at about 10 o'clock, uh, Shanene called, and she wanted to know if, you know, and watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Oh, gosh. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Is there anything else? <laughs> but you know, that's the way women are wired. If she, if she called me and asked me, how was your day? Good. That was it. That's all that's it. It was good. But, but I'm dwelling with a court of knowledge. And I know she got to get it out. And I know this is therapy. Because I put on my melodious voice. Okay, all right, all right, that's good, that's good, okay. That's what I'm saying right there, baby, okay. All right, well, you know what? You know, if you need to talk to me again, you got my number. I know it's 4 o'clock in the morning, but you know what? You just go ahead and call me anytime. You know, you, you know I love you. Okay, uh-huh, okay, okay, love you too. 
okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, okay. Whatever it takes to bring her comfort. Whatever it takes. Because there's something about, and she can hear your voice, but when she hears mine. Brothers, listen, don't let your woman go to work and get all this out there. Don't, don't let them come to church and, and, and get all this. You protect them. Protect your, anything in your garden. I, I'm talking about just women, boys, young men, what, older, older, elderly. Protect them. Be glad. What can I do for you? Oh, that's so wonderful. Oh, how wonderful. Well, Pastor, I didn't get all that. I didn't get all that. Well, we, you, you, you got to keep coming because you, you, I got something for you. I didn't get it all either. So I can't, blame, I can't blame my upbringing. I got it now. Well, I just tell you, one thing God said, he said, I'll be a father to the fatherless. He said, if your mother and father forsake you, I'll take you in and take care of you. You know, a lot of times we, we, we major on, well, you know, uh, he he supposed to provide for me. Well, he is, but he's also supposed to protect you. He ought to be able to sense something's up and say, "Okay, let me deal with this." You know, I was going bowling tonight, but I want to stay with you. Come here, come here. You got a knot on your neck right there from tension. Come here, come here. Let Daddy rub that thing out. Well, better yet, let me have somebody come rub it out for you. You pull the cut. See, see, not only when, when I get married, and when I marry somebody, or when my daughter gets married, not only is she getting a man, she she gets a she. Oh God, okay, let me say this right quick. She gets another covering now. After she leaves daddy's covering, she's supposed to be transferred right to another covering. She's not, you're not supposed to be without a covering sister. Amen. You need a cover. I know you. I know you're smart, intelligent, got empty in, in the degrees, and you and you got all that certification and all the awards, but you need a covering. Amen. I don't care how anointed you are. You, God made it whereby you need a covering. Yeah. And and oh gosh, and see, don't don't let your daughter leave the house and move in with some dude, Amen. and he can't take care of her better than than you than daddy taking care of her. Brother, if you, if you can't take care of them and be willing to die for them, protect them, and cultivate them, and, and make them better and all that, just, leave, just let them stay at the house. Just call them on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> but, but God, that, 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 I, you know, I, you know I, I got some play daughters. I got some play daughters. But, but if I had a real daughter, I would make it so hard on that, 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 that guy. <laughs> I would make it hard, boy. But he 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 think he think fifteen times, but he thought try to hit on my daughter. Cause she gonna it's gonna be so good. She ain't, I she gonna never wanna leave. She walk around there with I buy her a crown. Walk around, you miss America, baby. You miss <laughs> You miss America. You look like Beyonce too. You good. You good. You sing like yeah, yeah, you good. I bet that girl hair be so big, she ain't going nowhere. Can I be homeschooled with you, daddy? Yeah. I'm serious. I'm made for that. I'm anointed for that. You're anointed for that. Every male is anointed for that. And not just the daughter, but the children. You're anointed for that. You speak to the genius in them. You tell them you can achieve anything. You want to be, listen, you want to be you Peter Pan then. That's who you are. You want to be the nutcracker? You the nutcracker. You can do that. No, I'm serious. You, 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 can, you can do that. Oh, I know you had a little slip, but that's okay. That's, the, that's way back there. We got so much out here ahead of us, it ain't even funny. Don't be majoring. You know, I don't understand. Folks make mistakes. We just want to major. Why you? Just, don't you ever call your kids stupid. Don't ever call them stupid. You are anointed to cultivate and protect. To speak stupid into them. It's like, if I wasn't like, if, like you did daddy, and I was, I was just a friend, I'd say, oh, you stupid. They're like, mm, whatever. But let you say it. 
See, I'm anointed to, I can go, my, my word go where the folk word can't go. Because I'm anointed to speak to them. So I got to watch what I say. To her, I got to watch what I say. I remember, boy, she, she, she used to check me, you know, when I was learning. <laughs> when I was learning. She said, boy, don't talk to me like that. Said, yes, ma'am, I won't talk to you like that. I said, what did I say? She said, it wasn't, it wasn't what you said. It was how you said it. I thought, what I say? Yeah. Well, you said this. I thought, well, what the problem is? You said it like this. I said, and then I did this. We're going to get into all this kind of thing. Because, see, women, I'm out of time. Um, but women, don't make us guess what you want. Don't make us guess. We don't like to guess. We grown. <laughs> You know, we like straight lines. We don't, don't want to play. We don't want to play game door number one, number two. We don't want to play that. <laughs> don't make us guess. I think the great thing I learned is, tell me what you want, how you want it, what time of day. I'm serious. I ain't trying to guess. We don't do guess. Y'all, y'all like to take the long route. We like to get there. You know what I'm saying. Okay, y'all, I got I to gotta stop. Uh, wow. Uh, y'all kept me. I didn't even get as far as the first class. So uh, I guess y'all got to be a little behind. We, we'll see if we can make up. Some of y'all need to come in the first service. It's a, I don't know. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to... Um, Well, let's 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 receive let's receive our our offering tithe and then and don't leave yet, cause uh, you don't want to leave until this, what they call it benediction. <laughs> no, because I I want to I I'm I'm impressed to.